Hello and welcome to my studio, my new studio, for the eighth episode of the Green Bean Podcast. My name is Katie Green and this is my dear dog Jack and we're so glad that you've decided to join us for a chat about what we've been up to. I'm going to share with you a bit of drawing and I've got a new knitting project to share with you and a little bit of sewing and we've got a different kind of walk today and um, the weather has been absolutely hideous it's been raining and windy and it's not jack's favorite kind of walking weather um, so we're going to take you on a walk in our local woods which we actually go to every single day um, rather than out on the moors so i hope you enjoy watching that as well before we get really started i wanted to share some exciting news with you if you follow me on instagram you already know um, but just in case you haven't caught up, so in the last episode I shared that I was working for Blackie Yarns um, just before I went on my amazing trip to New York, which, gosh, it's been so long since I recorded, so much has happened. Um, I'm not going to try and cover everything, I'm just going to try and catch you up a little bit briefly with my news. So I went to New York because my graphic novel Lighter Than My Shadow was nominated for a Harvey Award. Um, it was amazing to go over there and go to the awards ceremony. I did not win the award, but I didn't honestly expect to. It was just a, a pleasure and a privilege to be, be over there and to be able to go to New York Comic Con. Um, just before I went on that trip, I really felt like it was time to make my big decision. Um, I used to work as a freelance illustrator full time many years ago and I stopped and took a break because I had some health struggles that were going on um, and I got my full-time job at Blackie Yarns but I always knew that I would want to go back to illustrating full-time and it just before I went to America I realized that I was waiting for a right time that was never going to happen you know I was waiting for all of the bits of the puzzle to come together and everything to feel perfect and I realised that that was not possible. There was never going to be a moment that felt right to take that leap, that I had to make the decision to take that leap and then try and make it come together myself. So that's what I did before I went to America, handed in my notice and I have now finished working at Blackie Yarns and I am back full time in this studio. Um, regular viewers will recognise this is not the room that I've been recording in before. Um, that's because my very sweet partner surprised me when I came home from my last day at work and had switched the house around. So this is the biggest room in the house. It used to be our bedroom um, and the small room at the back used to be the studio. I came home and I was completely flabbergasted to discover that this room was now my studio and I'm surrounded by my books, I'm surrounded by my stash, I've got, a, yeah, it's, it's a huge and beautiful space and I'm incredibly lucky to have it. Um, and yeah, this is where I'm going to be working full time. So I don't quite know what that means yet. I'm going to spend the next couple of months just figuring things out, working into a routine, trying to find out a way of being sustainable. I think something that I always wanted this podcast to be is something that my work needs to be as well. I need to be sustainable, I need to be honest about how, how long things take to do. Um, but one thing I do know is it's obviously going to give me time to record podcasts more often. I'm definitely planning to do that. Um, I think it's really important that people who are doing creative work are honest about what it's like to live a freelance life. Um, something I worry about putting this podcast out there is that it gives an idyllic view of my existence that I'm walking my little dog out in the countryside and drawing and knitting and you know I do that doesn't mean I'm going to start podcasting about paying the bills or telling you if I've got a client who's not paid me on time but it does mean that I'm going to try and give a regular and and real reflection of what my freelance life looks like. As I say, I've no idea what shape that's going to take, but I, I know for sure that over the next few months I plan to share more podcasts. 
I'm obviously going to be doing more drawing, so there'll be more of that to share with you. Um, I hope that you'll be interested in joining me on the journey and seeing what happens. But for now, let's um, let's share what I've been up to drawing-wise and knitting-wise, and why don't we start by heading out for a walk in the woods. On my drawing table today is a page for the new issue of The Green Bean. Um, in case you're not sure what The Green Bean is, it is a zine that I used to publish, gosh, almost 10 years ago I started it, when I was initially freelancing as an illustrator. Um, I published The Green Bean, gosh, firstly once a month, and then sensibly I changed it to every two months. Um, and it just contained sketches, illustrations, snippets of my life, recipes, book reviews, all kinds of things that I was passionate about. And um, I sold it at zine fairs and on my website, and people seemed to really enjoy it. Um, but most importantly, I really loved making it. Um, and it's been in my mind for many years to bring the green bean back. It's obviously going to be different from the way it was before, because I'm different. But um, yeah, I'm working on a new issue. I've been working on this issue while I've been working full time over the last year. I'm hoping that things will start to happen more quickly now that I have more time to spend on it. But we'll see how it unfolds. I am I'm obviously taking commissioned work as well, and that has to take priority. So we'll see what happens. This particular issue of the Green Bean has a seashore and rock pool theme. Um, and the page I'm working on now is a page about oyster catchers, which are a bird that you find on estuaries and rocky shores around the UK. Um, they're really common, they're not particularly... I don't want to say that they're not special, that seems very unfair. Um, you see them everywhere. They also um, move inland to breed during the year, so you often see them on the moors, particularly up in Yorkshire, which is one of my favourite places to go on holiday. You see a lot of oyster catchers. Um, they have this really striking black and white plumage with a red beak and red legs and slightly disconcerting red eyes. Um, but nonetheless, they're, they're really beautiful to look at and I wanted to include a page about them in this issue of the Green Bean. I am using a Pigma Micron 01 pen, which is a 0.25mm line width. It's my go-to pen, really, for any kind of ink illustration I get through significant quantities of them. After I'd finished my book, Lighter Than My Shadow, I think I, for some reason, I decided to keep all the expended pens when I'd finished, and I must have had a box of about 50 of them. Poor things. All their nibs were squashed flat to nubbins. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, they're the only pen I buy. I, 
find them perfect for everything I need. Um, I use a couple of different thicknesses. Um, the 005 for adding slightly finer detail and the 03 for when I'm basically when I'm signing books because um, my handwriting with the 01 is very very small and I like to try and make a little bit more of a statement if I'm signing a book for somebody. So I've been feeling a little bit overwhelmed by my knitting lately. I've been very guilty of casting on too many projects. Um, it's definitely something I tend to do when I'm busy or stressed or busy and stressed. Um, there's something exciting and instantly gratifying about casting on a new project. Um, and I've definitely let myself get a bit carried away. I did a count up the other day. Um, and I've got, I think, 10 projects on the needles, which is just way too many. Um, looking at the state of things on Ravelry, I haven't actually finished a project since July um, because I've just kept on casting on new things. And what happens when you start new things is obviously you don't finish the old ones and it ends up starting to feel like you're not making any progress on anything. I'm sure I'm not the only knitter who has this problem. 
Um, I am going to try and curtail it. I think one of the reasons I've got so busy at the moment is I'm doing quite a lot of secret gift knitting, which I can't share with you on the podcast, just in case the recipients of the gifts are watching. If they are, I hope they don't know who they are, um, then it's going to be a big surprise. Um, I will share those projects with you in due course. Um, I'm going to film some footage of me working on them to share later, but until Christmas they're going to remain a surprise. So that's accounting for a lot of my knitting time. Um, and you know, when you're gift knitting, even if it's for somebody that you love, it can feel a bit like an obligation. And when you feel like doing something for yourself, you're just like, oh yeah, actually, I'll cast on something for myself. Um, which is precisely what I'm doing right now. This is a new cast on. Um, which is exactly what I don't need. I know that I am... Um, I've got other things I need to be working on, but... Um, this is a new cast on today and I will explain why in due course. But first I wanted to talk a little bit about how I plan to deal with the excess of projects I've got going on at the moment. a lot of people who watch this podcast have the impression that I am a monogamous knitter. Um, just to clarify, if you're not a knitter and not familiar with that phrase, monogamous means you are the kind of knitter who works on one project at a time and finishes it before starting something else. And much as I would love to be that person, I am not. Um, as I've already explained, I've got 10 projects on the go at once and I just can't help myself from starting new ones. Um, I made a decision when I started the podcast that I would only share one project in each episode, which I think is what gives the people the idea that I'm only working on one thing at a time, but I am here to confess that that is 100% not true. Um, I have way too many projects going on. However, it is starting to stress me out. It's starting to feel like too much. And in particular, um, now that I'm changing my lifestyle and I'm going to be freelancing, I'm actually going to have less time to knit. Um, which sounds crazy, you know, if you have a full-time job you'd think you'd have less time to knit. Um, but I'm expecting to be busy, I'm expecting to be working longer hours and not to have as much time for knitting. So I certainly don't want my knitting to be something that stresses me out. So what I'm going to try and do is become a monogamous knitter. And I'm going to experiment with it for next year and you're very welcome to join me with the experiment if you feel like it's something that might be of benefit for you as well. Um, I am gonna work on one project at a time until it's finished and then pick up the next one. Um, I suspect at least for the first few months that's going to involve me finishing my current projects one project at a time before I cast on anything new. So that's going to be a huge test because I've got things that I've swatched for already that I'm desperate to cast on. Um, not to mention, you know, I bought yarn on my recent trip to New York. I've just finished my job working in a woolen mill. Obviously, I made some last minute purchases while I still had stuff discount. Um, there's a lot of yarn in my stash waiting to be cast on. So it's going to be a challenge for me to resist, but I think I'm going to give it a try at least for a year and um, see how it feels. So, with all of that in mind, why, oh why, oh why, I hear you asking, have I allowed myself to cast on a new project? Um, the short answer is I don't know. I can't help it. And I'm sorry. <laughs> but 
Um, the long answer is that, uh, gosh, I can't even think of a decent excuse. Um, let me tell you what I'm making and then that, the, the story of why I'm doing it might emerge. So the project I've cast on is the Velamo Jumper by Francesca Hughes. Um, it was originally published in Pom Pom magazine. I'm just going to finish my row and reach behind me to check which issue it was. Um, it was an autumn issue and it was the one that was entirely based around natural dyes. Um, let's have a look. It was this issue. Autumn colour. It's the autumn 2016 issue and I actually did the natural dye illustrations for this issue. Um, Velamo, by the way, is this jumper that's on the cover. Um, you can tell by my swatch that I'm going to be knitting my version in green. No surprises there. Um, the yarn that I'm using is John Arben Textiles Devonia 4-ply, which is a um, a yarn from Devon where I live and it's not a yarn that I've used before it's a blend of Exmoor Blueface and Devon Blueface Leicester and Devon Wensleydale so it's got a lovely bit of Wensleydale sheen to it um, a nice drape um, and yeah I'm really loving these two greens together and my contrast stripe across the top and the shoulder caps is going to be in pink The reason that I have cast this on now, rather than sometime in the future, or sometime in the past two years, because to be honest, I've been wanting to make this jumper ever since I saw it on the front of Pom Pom, um, is that Frankie, the designer, is having a knit along in her Ravelry group. And I am officially the world's worst participant in knit alongs. I don't think I've ever managed to finish one on time. But I enjoy the spirit of them. I enjoy joining in the chatter and seeing what other people are making. So I wanted to be a part of it. And I believe it's the case with Frankie's Knit Along that you are eligible for prizes even if you don't finish, which is very encouraging for people like me because I'm obviously with five Christmas knitting projects on the go. I'm not going to be finishing this by the 31st of December. But I'm casting it on in good faith that I might be entered into the draw because the prize is the whole back catalogue of Frankie's patterns and I'm a huge fan of um, Francesca Hughes as a designer. I like almost everything that she has published. I think you'll remember in a few episodes ago I was test knitting her Raspberry 12 jumper which has become a real favourite in my wardrobe. So it would certainly be an amazing thing to win all of her patterns but I also just just fancy taking part and meeting a few people, talking about her amazing designs. So that's what I'm doing. In the spirit of honesty, here is a project that you've seen on the podcast before if you've been watching for a while and probably you won't remember but I most certainly remember that it's in exactly the stage that it was in when I last shared it. This is literally the first time I have picked it up to sew another stitch since I last recorded with it. Um, and that's a shame, I guess hand sewing seems like more of a luxury way to spend my time even than knitting. But 
This is actually a project that is going to be included as one of the craft projects in the new green bean. So I now have something, not of a sense of urgency, but definitely a reason to keep forging ahead and finishing it. If you haven't seen it before, it's um, some applique that I'm doing. I've got cut felt pieces which I'm sewing onto a piece of linen um, to make a pattern of an oyster catcher, the same bird that I've been drawing. Um, doesn't quite look like one yet, doesn't have a beak, doesn't have any legs, but it will look like an oyster catcher and the rest of the cushion is going to have some black and white striped pebbles which I think will look really striking once I add the red of the oyster catcher's beak. Um, so I've obviously got a long way to go on this and although it's uh, come up in my order of importance it's still something that's probably going to have to come second to those Christmas gifts that I'm knitting. But nonetheless I do, I find the process of hand stitching really relaxing so maybe if I get stressed about knitting the Christmas presents this will be the project that I reach for. So I thought I'd show you what I'm planning to do with the rest of the cushion. Um, a little while ago I drew a scratchboard piece, just some sketches of oyster catchers. Let me show that to you. Um, here it is. It's just a small postcard size with five variations of oyster catchers. Um, and I used Photoshop to turn that into a repeating pattern on my computer. And I sent it off to Spoonflower, which is the website that digitally prints fabric. And I got this. Um, sorry, I haven't ironed it for you. <laughs> but it's a small test piece of fabric um, with my oyster catchers on it. It's just incredible to me that you can turn your own design into um, a repeating pattern and send it off and have it come back a couple of weeks later as fabric. You know, that's something that... 20, 30 years ago would have been completely unimaginable. So I love this fabric. That's going to become the back of the cushion. So it's going to have this applique design on the front, some nice black piping around the edge and this fabric on the back. Um, one of the things I love about Spoonflower and the magic of the internet is if you decide that you want to use the pattern I'm going to put in the green bean to make your own oyster catcher cushion, I can actually sell this fabric on Spoonflower. And either I've seen the fabric in person and decided that I'm happy with the way it prints, I'm going to be able to sell it to you as well. So that's something that is going to be like an extra thing that I'm going to be able to offer with the green bean. I'm actually going to use this pattern for the end papers, so it will feature in print as well. But I love that this isn't a fabric that's just available for me, that um, anyone will be able to buy it as well. I do not have any garment sewing projects on the go at the moment. I have just been so busy with trying to adapt to my new routine and all of my spare time has been taken up with gift knitting. So I haven't started to cut out a new project, but I am wearing a dress that you haven't seen before. I did talk about it in my last episode. I bought this blue and white fabric in La Maison Sajou in Paris in the summer. And I decided to turn it into a dress to wear to New York in October. Um, the pattern I used is from another one of my Japanese sewing books. It is from this book, Formal and Little Back Dress. And it is actually in Japanese, it's not in English. I'm sure that I've seen an English translation somewhere, but I did look on the internet and I couldn't find it. So I think it is just in Japanese for now. But 
To be honest, if you've got a little bit of experience dressmaking, it's not a problem to follow the instructions because they give all of the instructions in pictures as well as words. Um, so the dress that I made is this one, dress P, the blue one. Um, I made quite a lot of changes. Um, you can see this version has like an empire bust line, which I don't find particularly flattering on me. So I lowered it a little bit. It's just at my natural waist. Um, and that meant that the dress itself comes down to below my knees. I also added pockets to stand up and show you those because what's a good dress without pockets? And I added this little trim on the top of the sleeves. Now, something I love about this dress is that the top is just cut in two pieces. There's no darts, there's no setting in of sleeves. It's just one continuous piece of fabric, but it still makes this really pretty sleeve shape. So I'm really happy with that. And I just think this trim finishes it really nicely. I actually bought the trim in New York when I was there last year, so it seemed like the right thing to add to my dress that I was going to wear in New York this year. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of the Green Wing podcast. I'm so glad that you decided to spend some time with us. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the episode. I love hearing from you when you leave comments for me. I'm sorry that I don't always get a chance to reply to everybody. I do try, but I really, it just makes my day to, to receive your comments and feedback and you know, hear your take on the creative adventures and struggles and triumphs that you're having. So thank you so much for joining in and sharing that with us. I hope that you will join us again next time. Um, I am excited and can't wait to see what unfolds over the next few months. And I look forward to sharing it with you then. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye. incredibly amenable in today's episode. I, uh, I think it's because we're sitting in here, we've got the radiators on, it's super cozy and uh, he's just happy to be cradled in my lap like a baby. <laughs> <laughs>